So, how many times has the topic of who's the most innovative guitar player of all time come up? Generally speaking, the two gentlemen who get discussed in that conversation are Jimi Hendrix and Edward or Eddie Van Halen. Right? It's generally the two guys that get discussed as the most innovative legendary guitar players of all time. So I, I thought like, well, how about like we actually have a discussion about it and do kind of a comparison, right? And, and always when you talk about these two guys, it always comes down to those two debut albums, right? So of course we got Are You Experienced by the Jimi Hendrix Experience. And then a little over a decade later, you've got Van Halen, Van Halen. Both groundbreaking albums for a lot of reasons, but it always comes down to those two, those two guitar players and the things that they did and how groundbreaking they were at the time. Um, you know, so I guess, you know, first, you know, which is the greater debut? I mean, that's uh, up to interpretation, right? They're both amazing, legendary for a reason. A lot of great songs. We'll get to the songs afterwards. Um, but which was the bigger impact at the time? Um, which was a more drastic change from a guitar perspective? I think you could make the argument that at the time, you know, when Jimmy and the Experience burst on the scene back in, uh, you know, 66, 7, 68, you know, the latter half of the 60s, uh, rock guitar was at kind of like an infant stage, right? You didn't have a lot of the histrionics and the technical wizardry that would come much later on. So Hendrix bursting on the scene kind of burst a little bit of a bubble that people were living under, idolizing guys like Eric Clapton and Jeff Beck, amazing guitar players, right? Pete Townsend, Jimmy Page, list of a whole bunch of others. Uh, that were doing some great things, mostly in the blues and psychedelic style. And then along comes this guy, this left-handed guitar player from Seattle, who basically made a name for himself going over to, to England, to the UK, before doing much of anything here, uh, playing this kind of electrified blues, psychedelic blues music utilizing all sorts of different techniques really weren't heard before utilizing volume and feedback and different types of pedals and things like that playing this raw heavy amplified loud form of the psychedelic blues which really was something very different for the time right and then you know on the other end of the spectrum you go ahead to, to the late 70s and of course, this uh, amazing debut album in 1978, and basically, Mr. Van Halen just kind of kicking it up a notch, right? Basically, taking hard rock music, the metallic hard rock music, and adding this like technical wizardry, this newfangled way of playing guitar, and all these flashy tricks and things that really was unlike anything we had heard since Hendrix. And yeah, there were lots of people in between, right? You know, Hendrix, of course, wasn't around with us all that long by the beginning of the 70s. He's basically gone already, unfortunately. Uh, you had folks like, you know, Richie Blackmore and Jimmy Page with Led Zeppelin. Of course, Beck and Clapton still doing their thing. Michael Schenker, right? Lots of great guitar players. Joe Walsh. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. Uh, but were there any true innovators since Hendrix who caught the public's attention said wow that cat's doing something completely different where musicians as well as non-musicians were taking note of just the incredible artistry and talent and virtuosity of that guitar player really we hadn't had that guy since Hendrix and now all of a sudden Van Halen comes and so again, you've got about a decade apart, you've got these two groundbreaking albums. So I figured, you know, what? let's take a look and, you know, like, as far as like the most drastic change, I, I would have to say, if you look at just kind of, when Hendrix landed, 
you really didn't have anybody doing all this wild stuff that he wound up doing. I think when Van Halen hit the scene, you not only had Hendrix, but you had some of the other guys I mentioned. So there was a lot of things happening on the guitar front. Even though Eddie kind of turned it all upside down, I think you still had this idea of the guitar hero, the guitar virtuoso. Whereas before Hendrix, you had a couple of guys, but really it was Hendrix who became that instant kind of superstar on the guitar that everybody, including guitar players, were taking notice of. Yeah, Clapton was kind of the guy before then, but Jimmy took it to another level. Even if you read quotes from Clapton, you know, after he saw Hendrix play live, he's like, well, <laughs> you know, <laughs> there's a new guy in town. It's like, never mind what I'm doing. So I think you still have to give the edge to Jimmy as far as like when they first hit, uh, you know, who, which was the more drastic change. But, you know, Eddie was taking things to another level from a virtuoso perspective and utilizing new techniques that had not really been done before, right? Because, of course, with all the tapping, the use of the whammy bar, uh, that, that, that whole brown sound that he had, this almost like perfect sound, it was metallic yet earthy, right? Um, and as far as the songs go, I mean, there's classics on both of these, right? Purple Haze, Manic Depression, Hey Joe, Wind Cries Mary, Fire, Third Stone from the Sun, Foxy Lady, Stone Free, Are You Experienced, right? Running with the Devil, Eruption, the remake of You Really Got Me. You got, you got cover tunes on both of these, right? Hey Joe, You Really Got Me. You got Ain't Talking About Love on here. I'm the One, Jamie's Crying, Atomic Punk, I'm on Fire. I mean, top to bottom, there's just greatness on both of these. As far as from a lead guitar perspective, I think they're pretty much both equals. Um, I don't think we really had any guitar players playing solos and lead guitar work like either of these guys. And yet, But yet, you listen to Hendrix, you listen to Van Halen, they're both completely different from each other. Right? So you have to, that's pretty even. It depends on whether you like more bluesy stuff or more like a hard rock vein. Jimmy's got the psychedelic edge. Eddie's coming from that kind of metal hard rock background, right? Uh, as far as rhythm guitar playing, I would give the edge to Eddie on this. I think uh, Eddie, always known as a master soloist, but I think he's one of, or he was one of the greatest rhythm guitar players ever. Uh, I think if you listen to the, the riffs on this album and all throughout the Van Halen catalog, what a masterful rhythm player. Guy who could create riffs to die for, but yet it's all done just very compactly. And yeah, he could do complicated stuff too, but he had a sense of rhythm in him and a sense of swing that I think was kind of unmatched. I mean, Jimmy, great rhythm player too, created great riffs and whatnot, but Jimmy was a little more about the feel. Jimmy was more a little bit about jamming and the solos, I think, but he had the funkiness to him that Eddie didn't quite have. But I think as far as uh, you know, rhythm guitar playing, I think I give the edge to Eddie just a little bit. Um, you know, leads, I don't know, it's pretty much equal there. But then you got, you know, both guys use the uh, the tremolo or the whammy bar quite a bit. In fact, you could make an argument that, uh, you know, Uli John Roth notwithstanding, that you look at some of the greatest uh, players who manipulated the whammy bar, uh, both of these guys, terrific. I think that because um, Jimmy obviously using mostly strats um, and non-locking tremolo systems, even though Edward early on didn't do that either. Uh, I think uh, Jimmy was just like, well, you know, we're going we're gonna to manipulate this thing. If the guitar's going to go out of tune, that's okay. Uh, not a big deal. I think that uh, Edward's use of it was a little bit different. Whereas if he used it to extend kind of chords and notes and things, where Jimmy was just into making all these otherworldly sounds and whatnot. Again, more coming from the psychedelic background as opposed to Eddie, more from a hard rock background. Use of feedback, things that can be manipulated from the amps, I mean, that's a Hendrix win right there. I think Jimmy was a master of utilizing feedback and getting as much as he could out of the amp, right, with as much manipulation as possible. But at times you could say that all that feedback, all that noise is kind of chaotic and not as beautiful as the brown sound that Eddie got. So it all depends on what you really like there. Um, of course, one's a righty player, one's a lefty player. I don't think uh, it's, it's 
pretty cool seeing a lefty guy doing all the sort of stuff. There's not many very popular, noteworthy lefty players in the history of rock music. Right? As far as guitars used, uh, you know, of course, Jimmy, mainly a Strat guy. We've seen lots of concert footage over the years and photographs of Jimmy uh, with the white Stratocaster, you know, even with, a, with a maple neck, with a rosewood neck, a lot of different colored Strats, black and white. Uh, the cream one is probably the most popular one, most famous one. Uh, occasionally he would use a Gibson Flying V. We've seen him use SGs and Les Pauls from time to time. It's mostly the Strats. Like I said, I, I think I've seen him playing Vs more often than the others. Um, while Edward, you know, used a Gibson ES-335. Les Paul Jr., occasionally you see him play a um, standard, Les Paul standard. But then, of course, he's got this customized Strat guitar, you know, Frankenstein guitar, the Frankenstrat guitar, whatever you want to, whatever you want to call it. Uh, of course, he used the uh, Ibanez Destroyer, used Kramers, was endorsed by Kramers, Charvels. Uh, later in life, of course, the Ernie Ball Music Man EVH guitar. Then he worked with Fender again towards the end. You know, the EVH Wolfgang guitar. So I think Eddie was the guy who was, uh, you know, he, he liked what he liked. He liked putting together guitars. He liked certain neck specification. He liked certain pickups. So why not grab from this, that, and the other thing? Grab a tremolo from here. So he, or especially early on, he really liked kind of making his own guitars or having his own guitars made for him that had all these different specs. Um, but in the end, he went with companies to build a specific guitar line for him, right? Whereas, uh, you know, Jimmy just basically liked whatever was available, right? So I think, you know, both guys liked the Strat style guitars for the most part. That's what they became known for. Um, so they're very similar there. Use of effects, you know, Jimmy, Jimmy was, I think, much, much more the effects pedal experimenter than Edward was. You know, Jimmy, the fuzz face, of course, because he loved using fuzz, the distortion, the univibe, get that kind of sweeping sound. Loved Wawa, he used the Vox Wawa, the Octavia, right? So utilizing all these kind of like modulation effects and fuzz, that was the Jimmy sound. Whereas, you know, Eddie, you know, including the amps he was using, Eddie was more like, like using the phaser, right? MXR phaser, MXR flanger fa fla phase. Phaser and flanger were his two effects of choice. A little bit of Echoplex as well, as well as some chorus. Right, so both a little bit different with the type of effects that they use to get their sound. As far as the amps go, I mean, you know, Jimmy was a Marshall guy. He used that Marshall Super 100, right? Basically the Plexi amp. Whereas Eddie got that brown sound early on with the same Plexi amps. Right, then of course he moved on to the PB5150 amp, which eventually became the EVH5150. Again, that whole brown sound thing. So, um think that uh, Edward with his, his limited amount of effects and the specific type of amp and settings that's how he got that sound and again because I think they're live their sounds were much much different because Jimmy coming from a different time different era utilizing all these modulation effects and super high volume lots of feedback lots of fuzz right very very different sound uh, you know what else we could talk about these two guys you know they're Unfortunately, throughout the years, we never got a ton of live albums from uh, from Van Halen, right? Unfortunately, I mean, most of us have had the opportunity to see the band live at one point or another. But um, as far as like live albums that have come out officially, yeah, there's certainly bootleg stuff. But there's a million live albums with Jimmy, and I think the great thing about again a different time, right? Late '60s. Uh, every Jimi Hendrix performance or live album that you hear is different than the one that came before it. So you can collect all these live albums from different venues, different places, different countries, and Jimmy like would never play any of these songs the same twice. Um, whereas you know the Van Halen set less jamming, obviously a little more rigid playing the song. So uh, over time, it has become more of more fun to go and collect the various Hendrix live albums because of that different set, different songs being played every night, different way to play them. Um, but, you know, whatever there is available from Eddie is always amazing, of course. Uh, and as far as the studio albums go, it's hot as balls out here, folks, let me tell you. Uh, as, as far as studio albums go, you know, you've got those three legendary Hendrix albums that he put out. 
Are You Experienced, Axis, Bold as Love, and Electric Ladyland. And uh, of course, then we lost him. And there have been numerous posthumous studio things that have come out, which of course uh, collect all the various songs and whatnot that he had been working on in the studio before he passed away. So the legacy, the studio album legacy is much, much shorter. Whereas on, you know, Edward, you've got those amazing early run albums. And then, of course, you've got, uh, once David Lee Roth left the band, you've got all the Sandy Hagar albums, of course. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's kind of hard to argue with the length of the catalog of Van Halen. And so I think you have to, you know, there's obviously a lot of greatness on those three first Hendrix albums, but then a ton of greatness on a, a much, much longer career um, before Edward passed away. And, you know, as far as like, um, you know, who had more imitators, I think that's also kind of hard to, uh, to really quantify because... Yes, we've had we have had a lot of guys want to do that kind of bluesy, uh, psychedelic, heavy rock sound, funky sound that uh, Jimmy kind of created. There were a lot of Hem Hendrix imitators, um, but I don't think anybody came really close to the actual Hendrix sound. You know, you can throw out Trower and Marino and a couple others here and there, uh, Randy California and a little bit of Uli Roth. But I think you know, for me, because uh, I I was. I was right around of that age of the Eddie years when he first burst on the scene. I mean, there were a ton of Eddie imitators to come up in his wake. Uh, you could sit and talk about all of them, right? George Lynch, Randy Rhodes, Warren Martini, Robin Crosby. I mean, the list goes on and on of guys who came and then started doing the, the, the tapping thing and that kind of like, you know, hard rock, metallic hard rock style, that L.A. sound sort of thing that, that Edward kind of kind of created there so I think when you look at like the imitators and the influence going forward at least for a number of years at least five or six years or so I think uh, you can't deny uh, what Van Halen did and how he influenced the whole generation of players after him I would say even more so than Hendrix um, so ultimately you know when you ask the question like well who was the most influential um, it's, it's really hard to go one way or the other because I think you can make a case for both of these guys and I think it's just it's cool to talk about both of them being so different and each from a different era uh, I think at the time because there wasn't this whole guitar hero thing much going on at the time I think you have to say that just Hendrix became that like kind of otherworldly guitar hero first even though we had Clapton and Beck before him I think Jimmy really became that first, oh my God, this guy is doing something totally different. He's from another planet. And then Edward came a decade or so later and basically took that, twisted it a bit, and took it off to an even further planet. So it's really, it's really hard to say. I mean, I have to, I love both of these guys. And I don't really want to pick one over the other. I, I would just say they both were as great an influence on their generations as the other. I really think that Hendrix made much, much more of an impact on kind of like a barren uh, guitar hero scene when he came, and thus will always be looked at as the legend who kind of spawned everybody else. But yet I think that Edward created more imitators and made it cool to be a guitar hero once again and play this style of music which as we saw like the whole la sound the glam metal the hair metal hard rock uh, scene became huge for a number of years so you know he's just as influential um and both had their own tricks and things that they did and both you know created this legacy uh so yeah i mean i think it's just it's more a cool excuse to talk about both of them and kind of stack them up against each other but ultimately it's up to you folks the viewers to decide well which one do you feel was more influential both great so it's not really up to me to pick like i said i think both at their times were equally as influential maybe if we were to you know look 30 40 years from now and, and kind of look back and say well who was you know i think hendrix is always going to be that first guy there's always the one who's the first 
Uh, but I think that uh, depending on the age group that you are in, uh, Van Halen might be that guy. And like I said, I think he spawned a, a way more imitators, uh, which, you know, that's the biggest form of flattery, right? So it, it depends on how you look at it. Both amazing. Two legendary debut albums. Uh, so for you, the viewer, you decide. Who do you feel is more uh, influential to rock guitar? Or maybe you think they're just both great and we should just leave it at that. And that's fine, too. So thanks for watching. Visit us on the web at www.seatranquility.org. We're on Facebook. We're on YouTube all together all the damn time. Please subscribe if you haven't already and click on that notification bell so you get alerted of all of our content as a post. And please do hit the like button before you leave. Also, down below, we got the links to our Ko-Fi page for channel donations, our merch page, and our Cameo page. Thank you in advance for all your support there. And we'll see you soon here with more stuff I'm Pete Pardo. Take care. Stay cool.